welcome and good day to you. It happens to be early morning here, so if I sound a little sleepy, that's why. My husband is off to work and the children are not yet awake, so I am enjoying a bit of quiet time alone, and I'm here to share with you what we worked on last week, week number two, in our homestead. I did order a few spigots, water filter spigots, for the garden. Husband's still been working on tamping for the future pool site, but the main project I accomplished since it's January is planning the garden for the year. What's going to go where and when, and that's what I'm going to share with you now. I drew up this uh, little sketch of the garden last year once we had everything built, and I numbered all the wall beds and I numbered the ground beds, and this is just to help me keep organized and to have a visual of all the spaces that I have to work in. I also made this pretty simplified spreadsheet and it just lists all the different beds and their numbers on the vertical side. And on the horizontal side, I have the growing months listed, but I did January through December because some stuff overwinters. And this way I can see what crops I'm gonna have each season because I use the beds more than once if possible. And if it isn't obvious, the W stands for wall, those are my wall beds, and the G stands for ground, for the ground beds. And the two that say OR1 and OR2, that's just for the original raised beds that we have made out of wood and metal. So the first thing that I start filling in on my spreadsheet are what crops I already have planted that are growing now that are gonna be ready in the spring or summer. And in the ground, I've got garlic, strawberries. I have some leeks that I don't wanna tear out yet. I wanna see how they do. And in the walls, I've got strawberries, some greens, herbs, and carrots that I plan on collecting seeds from this summer. And I do a little rough outline kind of sketch, one for the wall, one for the ground, and I split them up into the three seasons of spring, summer, and fall. So, and then I list everything I want to grow for the whole year under each category. And that way I'm less likely to forget an item. And then I can check them off as I add them to the different spots in the chart. Since tomatoes are the star in the garden, they get first placement. I aim to alternate where they grow each year. And last year I grew them in um, beds G11, 12, and 13. So this year I'm putting them in G1 through 8. I try to have at least 40 plants each year because you never know what you're going to lose to pest and disease. And we've also learned what our favorite varieties are over time. And so I like to already have an idea of how many of each I'm going to be planting based on the space that I have. Then because I love companion planting for the sake of saving space and also minimizing how much space weeds can grow in, how much sun they can get, I do like to pack stuff in especially around tomato plants. So the things that'll go around the tomatoes are onions, basil, calendula. Those are my usuals. Um, adding in a few beets also. Because we have two seasons here for growing cold crops, we have fall and spring, and we only have one summer, then I go ahead and I finish all the summer crop placement. That way I know I've covered that ground really well. And that's gonna include for us corn, watermelon, sweet potatoes, peppers, cucumbers, anything that you might grow in the summer. I like doing the cucumbers on the trellis after the peas. So I think about where I'm going to have my peas that year, and that's where I'm going to put the cucumbers. And probably uh, squash might use that trellis too in the fall. But I do plan lightly for green beans, not because I don't love them, but because I know that there's going to be blank spots, and I can tuck them in as those show up during the year. But Summer items are mostly in the ground beds because the ground beds are cooler and they retain moisture better. With all the summer crops finished, next I start in with the spring growing items like kale, spinach, collards, carrots. I favor the wall for the smaller spring crops because the beds are warmer uh, and harvesting is more pleasant. The larger brassicas, they'll go in the ground beds. And I try to keep in mind what was grown in each bed in the previous season, but I don't really stress about rotation. Uh, potatoes go in mid-March as well, and I'm going to attempt companion planting pole beans um, for some extra green beans 
in between the potatoes this year. So we'll see if that works out space wise and how they do. Uh, now squash, I really hated squash last year because of the bug pressure, but we're actually finally liking squash as an edible food. So I do hope to be able to grow them this year, but I may just cry and give up if the squash bugs take over again. We'll see. But I have put a space in for them um, for the summer squash and the fall squash. Then I fill in where the fall crops will go. So if you haven't noticed the lines or arrows that go after each crop, it kind of gives me an idea of how long that item will be in that area. That way I know when the space should start to open up for the next item to go in. And usually if it's an item that I'm starting by seed, I've already started it a couple weeks before. That way the bed isn't empty for long. I'm planting in the little small plants as the other ones are dying or being taken out. But only in the last two years have I worked really hard to remember to start my fall seedlings in the summer. Like the fall brassicas, um, getting carrots in the ground, they turn out so nice when they can mature in the cool and the cold of fall. They do so much better than they do when you start them in spring because in spring they get that extra bug pressure as the days warm and you don't have that in the fall. So I've worked really hard the last two years to, even though it's hot and you just don't want to be out working in the garden in July and August, I make myself get out there anyway and start those seeds. And the last main important to us crop that I map out is where the garlic is going to go because that has to go in about 30 days before your last, no, before your first frost in the fall. That way the roots can get established and then it's going to grow all winter and then not be harvested until the next June. So I have to make sure I save a big spot for that in the fall. So I decide where in the fall I'm going to be putting garlic, um, strawberries. I usually replant in the fall just because I've heard they like that little bit of disturbance. Uh, hopefully I didn't kill a lot of my strawberries this year. I didn't know that they were not supposed to follow certain plants. And I put mine where some peppers had grown last year. And supposedly that can kill the plants. So hopefully I didn't lose too many or I won't. But I look over the chart after all that for any empty spots. I saw that I still had a few in spring. I'm going to leave those open for now. And the open summer ones, I filled in more green bean spaces. And then I'm going to sketch where I'm going to need to set up the trellises for spring and summer. Just to give myself a little visual of the in-ground beds. Make sure I know what work I need to be getting done before I plant stuff. Like before I put the onions in in March... I usually go ahead and set up my tomato cages. That way I know exactly the spacing I'm going to have available for all that stuff that I pack in under the tomatoes. And that's about it. I can use this plan to let me know when and how many seeds to start for each crop because I know how much space I'm going to have for that crop. I usually tend to start way too many seeds and I end up selling or giving away a lot of my extra plants, but too many is always a better problem to have than not enough. Um, stuff I haven't shown you, stuff is that my husband is in charge of. He does all the fruit trees, the blueberries, blackberries, stuff like that. And he has a lot of winter cleanup and pruning to do for those items still to come. But hopefully next week or the week after, I will officially make my timeline of when I'm starting seeds. I'll look back on last year's calendar and see if it worked well on the timeline that I used last year. And I do need to start my onion seeds pretty soon. I'll probably do that next week. But otherwise, that's how I plan my beds for the year. If you follow, you may watch and see that I don't stick to half of it. Every year is different. So it just depends on how things are going. If I'm staying on top of stuff, the plans are great. At least they let me not have to think about too much when the season gets really busy. Like the plans are laid out. I don't have to stress about what's going where. I already have a plan, but it doesn't always mean that I stick to it. If you're just beginning a gardening journey, please don't let all these plans and things that I showed you 
stress you out. It took me years to reach the point of needing these kind of details and this much work thought out for me ahead of time. If you're an experienced gardener and you're already planning your garden for the summer, I would love to know what you do in case there's pointers that I would like to add or incorporate into my plans. And I hope you find special blessings throughout the rest of your day. And remember to live joyfully.